Welcome to this place that we call Virtual Sanctuary. This evening, we are gonna we're gonna go deeper inside of our series, Triggers and Traps. Triggers and Traps. Tonight, we are gathered to become more like Him. If you haven't had the opportunity to experience the first two parts of this series, let me encourage you once tonight is over to go back to catch up with us because uh, I want to see us better. I want us to grow into the full statue of who Christ is. Um, we don't have time to focus on anything else except for Christ and he crucified. That's all we have time to focus on. We can't focus on detractors and distractors. We can't focus on that. We got to focus on him and not be focused on them. It's important that you hear that. We got to focus on him because if you focus on them they will cause you to miss it but if you focus on him he will cause you to find it oh i'm excited tonight to be in your presence to be in your midst and you got too much at stake yes you got too much at stake to be the to be distracted by what the enemy is doing you have too much at stake your destiny is too great the call on your life is too great for you to get bogged down and trying to prove um, yourself to everybody you need to hear that tonight you don't have to prove anything to anybody because god knows who you are god knows exactly where he has you and wherever you are in this moment in your life god wants you in that moment can somebody just praise god tonight that devil i'm exactly where he wants me this is not a mistake it's not an accident i didn't stumble into where i am i'm in the situation that i'm in my steps have been ordered I wish somebody would holler tonight on the virtual sanctuary that I've been ordered to be in this situation. I've been ordered to be in these circumstances. And I understand if I've been ordered to be where I am, hear the word of the Lord, that then no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper and that every tongue that rise up in judgment shall be condemned. Why? Because I belong to God. You got to say that to yourself until you believe it, that I belong to God. And because you belong to him, no weapon. They're going to gather, but no weapon. Because if they're gathering against you, listen to the word of the Lord. He says they should surely gather, but not by me. Um, the doctorly reason, reasoning says to us then, if God didn't send them, Y'all watch out. Then somebody else must have sent them. That means Satan himself must have sent those who are gathering against you. I hear the word of the Lord that they will come in one way. But they're going to flee seven ways huh? because they're gathering against you and they're going to fall for your sake. I want you to hear that and believe that what the devil meant for evil. Watch God turn it around and make it work together for your good. Huh? If we ever get to a place in our lives to realize that huh, except God allow things to happen, it can't happen. Huh? The Bible declares that the king's hand. Or the king's heart uh, is in the Lord's hand and he turns it as he turns the rivers of water. In other words, God is in control. And if we can get to a place in our lives where we will allow God to be God, then we won't have all this infighting. We won't have all of this division. Uh, we won't have all of this naysaying going on. Uh, but as for you. You got to go ahead with your life. I hope you know I'm excited about your future. I am excited about your destiny. Every time God gives me the opportunity to speak to you, I want to remind you that there is greatness inside of you. I want to remind you that your future look bright. I want to remind you that God has a destiny for you. You're not enduring all of that just to get to where you are now but god is preparing you i feel jesus he is preparing you to where he is taking you it was necessary that you experience that david that you may learn god's statue that everything you experience is to get you to where god is trying to take you he needed you here preach son that he may take you there <laughs>
God needed you in this moment huh, to prepare you for your next moment. So never discount any experience. God is going to use all of it. Every, every, every Thursday night we get here and, 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 and God begins to speak to us in ways that we didn't expect. God is going to use everything that you have encountered to get you to where you have to be. There's no such thing as a losing season. You're always learning. There's no such thing as setbacks. You're only learning. You are learning in the moments where it seems like there's no movement that's taking place. Those are the moments you ought to be taking out your pen and paper and you're saying, yes, Lord, I'm learning everything that you are teaching me now because now, God, I've gone through this moment. Here it is. Huh? And I've learned that I can't trust everybody. It was necessary that you went through that moment huh? so you could learn huh, that everybody who smiled in your face is not always on your side. It was necessary for you to learn huh, that those who applaud you on one day, the next day they'll be hollering, crucify them. It was necessary for you to learn because now your skin is tough huh, and you can deal with the terrain where God is about to take you. You have to go through it in order to get to where you're going. You have to endure it. You have to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We're about to get to the text. Oh, you yeah, haven't even prayed tonight. I apologize. We're about to get to the text. I'm excited about your future. I tell you, I feel the fire in my chest that I am excited about your future. You haven't seen what God is taking you to. And because you haven't seen it, the enemy is trying to get you distracted. But I want to say to you tonight to lift your eyes into the hills from which your help is coming and know that tonight know that tonight huh that what god has planned for you the enemy the devil satan beelzebub himself can't stop it somebody's put it down in the chat devil you can try but you can't stop it devil you can come against it but you can't stop it devil you can do all you can in your power but you can't stop it because if god be for me who who can be against me. If God be on your side, who can be against you? Uh, so I dare you to say to yourself, uh, all that I do, I'm doing it as unto the Lord. And that's why you can't be moved by what the people say. Because that which you do, you are doing it unto the Lord. And when God is pleased with you, the Bible says when God is pleased with you, he will make your enemies be at peace with you. So all that you do, you do it as unto the Lord, not unto people. For you ought to please God and not be man pleasers. Oh, people are fickle. They will change on you. So you can't be a people pleaser. You have to be a God pleaser. I'm, I'm going to get to the text. I'm going to get to the text. I, 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 I enjoy the opportunity to pour into you, to speak life into you, to encourage you to become all that God has called you to be. And that calling that God has on your life. Um, it, you, you may have had some encounters and, and the enemy tried to try to tell you that it was over that it was done i want to say to you you was just in a training season what was he training you for he was training you for better he was training you for more he was training you to go further and to go ahead with your life brother sister stop crying about what they did stop crying about what they said you got to go ahead with your life you can't keep crying over spilled milk that's water up under the bridge you can't go back to what happened back then you got to go ahead with your life and stop allowing people to try to get you to live in your past huh? there's nothing in your past huh? everything that God has prepared for you is ahead of you. I hear that. Everything that God has prepared for you is ahead of you. And where you are headed to now, no devil in hell can stop it. I got to, I got to get to the text tonight. Can't no devil stop it. He can't stop it. If he could have stopped it, it would be over now. And that's why you are under the greatest onslaught of your life. Because the devil know you're getting closer. 
<laughs> the devil feels the pressure on him because you're getting closer to becoming what God has designed and purposed you to be. But I want you to know the closer you get to the promise, the closer you get to the purpose, the more attacks you will experience. But you have to be like Jesus. Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. Now, let's pray. I got to get to the text tonight. I'm excited about your future. Father, I thank you tonight for this opportunity. And for those who are gathered here, your people, speak to us tonight. Make your word become a lie to us. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, we're in our series, Triggers and Traps. Triggers and Traps. Last week, we, we left off at verse 5 and 6 where the disciples were saying, increase our faith. And many of us identify with this. Say, yes, Lord, if I'm going to deal with the people in my life, if I'm going to deal with being offended, God, I'm going to need a little bit, a little bit more faith. And, and humanly, that's, it sounds like we need more faith. But tonight, we're going to unpack this scripture and go deeper inside what Jesus was really saying to the disciples and what he is saying to us. Join me, if you will, in Luke 17, verse 5 through 10. And we're going to read those five verses with the parable that goes right after verse 5 and 6. Um, you'll find there these words. And the apostles said to the Lord... There it is. Increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be poured up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. And which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Powerful text, powerful scripture. Tonight, our focus would be faith is not the problem. Faith is not the problem. The disciples are asking for more faith to deal with the spirit of offense. They're asking for more faith. Jesus has said to them, if your brother offends you 70 times in a day. You ought to forgive them every time they ask for forgiveness. After you rebuke them, after they have repented, you ought to restore. L look look at that 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 the way that that works, that how how the steps of how that work. When they offend you, you rebuke. Rebuke, remember, is to correct, not to embarrass. You correct them on what they did wrong in order that they may repent. When they repent, Jesus says, restore them. Okay, so we got we got rebuke, repent, restore. Jesus says, I want you when you're dealing with the spirit of offense, be quick to get for forgive. He said, I want you to restore community because the cross is both vertical and it's horizontal. That you can't be in right relationship with God and wrong relationship with your brothers and sisters. Nor could you be in right relationship with your brothers and sisters and wrong relationship with God. Jesus said we are to restore. Disciples said, I don't know about that. Jesus, if you want me to do all what you have just commanded me, catch that there was a commandment. Jesus said, you shall forgive. This is not optional. Oh, my God. If you are a believer and think you got options when it comes to the commands of Christ, then maybe you need to question your salvation. It's not optional. Jesus says you shall forgive. That is a command. You shall. You don't have an option in this. Somebody put that in the chat. You don't have an option. You don't have an option in this. Jesus says, you need to forgive him. The disciples said, I don't know. That's going to be difficult. This is going to be difficult, Jesus. Do you understand what they did to me? Jesus, do you understand how they made me feel? I can never forgive them. 
They said, Jesus, if you want me to deal with those people who offended me, who hurt my feelings, or who broke my heart, uh, who, who embarrassed me, who caused me, God, to have issues, stress, and anxiety, if you want me to forgive them, Jesus, I'm going to need more faith. Jesus did not respond to them the way they thought they would by encouraging them. Because many of us have been right on board and say, yes, Lord, we, know more, we need more faith. But Jesus does not encourage them. Instead, Jesus rebuked them. It's there in the text. Jesus says, you don't have a faith problem. You have an obedience problem. How can I say that? The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to come to God. It is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligent seek him. Jesus says you don't have a faith problem. Because these men, these are the disciples who are talking. I need you to see the picture. These are the disciples who are talking. The Bible declares to us they have left businesses. They have left houses. They have left mothers and fathers. They have given up their professions to come out to Jesus. They have left everything. Jesus said, if you are to come out to me, you are to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. They have left everything. And Jesus started talking to them about the spirit of offense. And they said, Lord, we need more faith. What do you mean? What type of faith did it take you to leave your occupation? What type of faith did it take you to leave houses and lands? What type of faith did it take you to leave mothers and fathers? What type of faith did it take you to pack up tent and to follow Christ? Jesus said, faith is not your issue. Jesus says, your issue is Obedience. You have an obedience problem. Are you ready for this? You, you, you have an obedience problem. You are requesting more faith from me, but what's really wrong with you is you got a problem with being obedient. And Jesus says this to us, that I know you love me. Here it is in John's gospel, because you keep my commandments. Whoa, watch out. So Jesus equates, here it is, love with obedience. Wow. Not a feeling. Jesus says, by this I will know you love me because you keep my commandments. Here it is. And my commandments are not grievous. Huh? So Jesus then equates love with obedience. Jesus said, the problem and the issue you have has nothing to do with your faith. It has to do with your obedience. Mm-hmm. He says, um, to, to prove to you that this is not a, 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 a faith problem, Jesus says this is a, 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 an obedience problem. Um, more faith is not what's going to get you closer to God. Whew. More faith is not going to get you closer to what God wants you to be. I don't need more faith to drive down the street. See, when someone says, give me more faith, it puts Put focus on them, that they are a great person of faith. But our faith should be on Christ. Um, um, I don't need more faith to do what is right. Uh, you don't need faith to love your neighbor as you love your faith, your, your, yourself. Um, you don't need more faith to tithe, to give offering, to sow seed. Um, God has commanded us to return all the tithe and offerings to this storehouse. That is a commandment. You don't need more faith to do what is required of you. Jesus says you need more obedience. The problem is obedience. Huh? That, that, that too often that we are too impressed by what we do. And the question I have of the disciples and the question I have of us tonight how much faith, help me God, do you need to forgive the other person? Wow. How much faith do you need to forgive those who you said have, have hurt you, have broken your heart, uh, have called you mental anguish, have called you stress, that's caused you heartache? How much 
faith do you need? I want I want us to deliver time. How much faith do you need? Isn't the answer obvious? As much faith as it takes, I'm about to scream, to believe in that God has forgiven you is the same level of faith you need to forgive somebody else. And so when you're saying as the disciples, Lord, I'm having difficulty and, 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 and doing what you just commanded me to do. You asked me to forgive my brother. You asked me to forgive my sister. God, now I trusted you, here it is, sir, with forgiving my sins. I trusted you, God, in restoring me. I trusted you, restore, restoration. Uh, I trust you to restore me. God, put me in right, 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 right position. I also trusted you, God, in um, uh, um, renewing me. But I'm having an issue in doing for others, I feel, Jesus. What you've already done for me. Ooh, that's heaven. I'm having issues, God, to forgive other people knowing that you've already forgiven me. God, I know you did it for me. Not because my faith was so great. I'm about to holler. God, but because you are faithful. That it's through your mercies that I'm not consumed. And so God, I ask you, here's, the, here's what we say, in order for God to be glorified in us and through us, we have to forgive those who have wronged us. Because if we don't forgive, we have a, a root of bitterness inside of us. And so God, tonight I'm praying for us. That God will uproot the spirit of bitterness from our hearts. And let it be cast into the sea. As Jesus said, the mulberry tree. May it cast out into the sea. Because the issue is, when we ask for more faith, our eyes get placed on us and not placed on God. Jesus said, all you need is a mustard seed faith. And you have mustard seed, you can uproot the spirit of bitterness. Why a mulberry tree, Jesus? A mulberry tree can, can survive for over 600 years and its roots run deep. Somebody say deep. That bitterness can run deep. Jesus is saying to us, I don't care how deep the issue is. I don't care how offensive uh, the situation was. Uh, Jesus says that if you have small faith, you can uproot big problems. Y'all don't know when you you, you 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 don't know when God is talking to you. God is saying that when you have small faith, you can uproot big problems, which means you don't have a problem that's too big to that, that faith can remove it. Our issue is being obedient to what God is calling us to do. And so when Jesus uses this analogy in our text about the mulberry tree to be uprooted and to be planted in the sea, Jesus is not suggesting that we should go around and picking up trees. No, no, he's not suggesting that. No, Jesus is using an analogy. Somebody say an analogy. He's using a graphic illustration that says, that says to us even small faith can do what is in, with, with that, that which is humanly impossible. Why? Because small faith attaches us to an omnipotent God. <laughs> a small faith attaches us to an almighty God. And so then, if, um, if I have enough faith to believe that Jesus died for me, I have enough faith to believe in anything else that God requires of us. I need you to hear that. In other words, we need to question our salvation. If I'm struggling forgiving somebody, I need to I need to question whether I'm saved or not. Because it took faith to believe that Jesus was crucified and died for our sins. We believe in him and we've never seen him. And if if we believe in what we have not seen and we are struggling to forgive one another, we ought to question our salvation. 
Because the quick thing that many of us do, as the disciples did here in this situation, when any time Jesus requires of us and commands of us, uh, or we encounter things that are difficult by God's commands, uh, our focus automatically becomes on our faith when it should be on our obedience. It should be on our humility that we should grow in obedience. And so Jesus says, faith is not the problem. Obedience is the problem. And then he pivots, if you will, to this parable. And this parable is a demonstration of who we are. It's a parable about servants. Jesus is almost, he's finding what the disciples asked for humorous. It's laughable that you left your land, you left your businesses, your occupations, and you're falling out the mean. And I don't have anywhere to lay my head. You had enough faith to walk out the mean, but now you're saying you're struggling with just forgiving someone. So Jesus is using humor here. And Jesus began to tell the parable about this master who gives his servants commands. And that the servant or the slave does everything that the master commands. There's no questions that the slave does not give the master orders, but the slave, the servant, takes orders. We don't give God order. God give us orders. That, that, that the servant, the slave, does not negotiate with the owner, the manager, the owner, it doesn't, the master, it doesn't negotiate with them for what privileges they want or what perks they should get if they do something, but the servant the slave. They didn't have the option to go in and talk with other servants to see whether or not they should do what the command said. They had to work according to what the master said. They were not free to say whether they liked or agreed with what the master said or what the master required. They simply had one responsibility. I'm about to scream. They had one responsibility. That responsibility was to obey. Somebody put that down in the chat. Obey that 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 when when Jesus says that when the servant came in after a hard day in the field, the servant themselves didn't expect here it is the master to have their dinner ready because they've been out in that field working all day long. The the the, the servant didn't expect the master. They can come inside of the house and tell the master, I had a rough day. I'm tired. I'm not doing anything. Go and get your own dinner, microwave dinner, cook yourself self real quick. I, they can tell the master that. The, the servant, the slave, was expected. There it is. That's the word expectation. God has expectation for you. When God gives you a command, it's because he's expecting you to follow it. God is not giving you a command without expectation. I want you to hear that. With every command, there comes expectation. And behind that expectation uh, is the glory of God. And so Jesus says that the master expects the slave or the servant to follow the, com the command. Then it is, the master didn't expect the, the servant to, to protest because the servant's duty was to serve. And the servant could only eat their own dinner after they have served. I'm, I'm afraid that we live in, in a day and age where people encourage people to operate off of their own feelings, their own, their own perspective, what they want, which is considered to be selfish. Well, it's selfish when we are operating based off what we prefer and not what Jesus has commanded us. It's selfish. Somebody say it's selfish. And we got a lot of selfish believers in the 21st century who want it their way. But when it comes to operating and walking with God, you can't have it your way. God is the only way. And so Jesus says to the disciples, I'm about to get up out of here for the sake of time. He says to the disciples, your issue is not with your faith. He says, even the mulberry tree obey. If you say it to it, it will obey. Pay attention to the words. Obey. It will obey you. Then he goes down to the servant. And he says to us, likewise, as the servant is obedient to his master, we ought to be obedient to our master. He's savior. He's master. Wonderful teacher. So tonight, as we deal with this series, Triggers and Traps, and we'll focus on the spirit of offense, Jesus says, yeah, it may have hurt you what they did to you, but I've commanded you to forgive. 
I've commanded you to forgive. And faith is not your issue. It is your obedience. Oh, we, we're out of time, but never out of God's grace. We're going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper. There's so much we have to cover in regards to all the spirits that are attached. But I want to make sure we started here. So as we go throughout the rest of the series, you can be healthy. You can be whole. You can be ready to receive that which will come after this message. Oh, we're going to go into some deep things in God. We're going to go into some deep things to reveal what is behind. And next week, I hope you come ready. Make sure that you're ready here at the same time. But as we prepare to leave this place, but never God's grace, I hope and pray that you will know that there's greatness on your life. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. And remember, I love you to life. <laughs>